Oh, you didn't want. Thank you. That's awesome <laughs> to hear that somebody actually wants it. Yeah, the chunk you're putting into it is actually worth it. We're start, we started, by the way. So, yeah. yeah. I don't mind it being there. Be in there. You can also edit it out. <laughs> yeah. No, I meant like Chuck walked through it and just flexed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna start with club PSAs and recent CTFs. Well, that's a template slide. Anyway, um, upcoming CTFs. Did Def Camp already happen? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so the reason it's up there is this was scheduled for the 20th, so I apologize. Um, Hacker Ground has not happened. Chuck, that's that 21st one, right? No, the 21st one is Cash. The oh, Cash Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. What's so the same one that we're doing in Indianapolis? It's more like OSCB. It's the same thing, right? It's just named like two different things. It's yeah, it's named different. But okay. It's run by the Hacker Ground. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. The, the Hacker Ground. Uh, well, Hacker Ground's a group that like runs it. Right? It's definitely the same event because literally look at the description. It's yeah. in Indianapolis and it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, it's basically, no, it's, it's not in uh, Top Golf, though. It's basically like a same hotel we were at. So here's the thing. I don't know why that bullet is even there, because the immediately preceding bullet <laughs> says it's in Maryland. So ignore that last bullet. Yeah. I'm 99% sure there is a CTF happening at Top Golf Loudon, like at some point somewhere. So, no, they, they've hosted a CTF at Top Golf before. Yeah, I, I didn't go. I think I Paul, go. Went. Just Paul went. Why, why would you host a CTF at Top Golf? It's so Golf? weird. I don't get it. That's why I didn't go because I was like, there's no way there's actually going to be a war game at Top Golf. Yeah, but the uh, hackathon round went through from this basically OSCB style almost. And this guy oh. keep fucking hacking himself for no reason. Me? Yeah. Everyone did. Oh, <laughs> the whole team, everyone just like tried to hack themselves instead of hacking everyone. Oh, oh yeah. you're talking about how everyone was like DDoSing each other. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not even legal. Yeah. yeah. And that, no, that's why like everyone's like couldn't go to the site. Well, like, they, they were all, they had to man in the middle of a single connection, but no one knows knew how the man in the middle tools worked, so they would man in the middle of a router. Yeah. And, and so anytime you're like doing a, an ARP poison, you were poisoning everyone else to yeah. talk to you. <laughs> so, so it was just a flood of ARP requests. Yeah. And then some people were doing ARP receive requests too. So you had no chance in hell to like actually talk to the page you're supposed to man in the middle. <laughs> so like, and this is on what the fuck? Yeah. And we like, we're never gonna get invited back to anything. Yeah. No, 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 this is all the time. Everyone, everybody was there. Yeah. Everyone, even the professional guys are like, <laughs> it's like when we were we were at Cap. This isn't listed actually, because again, it's the twentieth meeting. We did the Capital One war game last night. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people went. We had like twenty people there, I think. Five teams. Like, what is it like? Is that like max five teams per team? It's hacking yeah. hands or Jeopardy. They said eighteen showed up. It was uh, Jeopardy. Um, it was using FBCTF. So. Is it like easy or like? It was a lot of networking. If you're good at networking, you're good. If you weren't, then you have to be Googling a lot. Mm -hmm. um, everybody kind of stayed in the same range. I mean, full disclosure, like our team kind of blew out everybody and then all the other teams did like really well. Um, we almost got like the entire board. Like the, fir the first team was just an absolute blowout. It was me, Paul, Lamar. Uh, it's either Diane or Diana. Diane, I think. John. John, yeah, Diane. And uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get that one Chinese guy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I mistake you for like another Asian guy? Yeah, I did. Um, no, okay, fuck, I just did it again. So here's the thing. You have the same icon as Joseph Tam. Joseph Tam, I mistake for another Asian guy. Before the, after the Booz Allen CTF. But in my defense, it was because both of them were wearing the exact same outfit. And I was like, man, we need to talk to this guy. Was, if anybody's familiar with when we tried to go after Kothan, it was Kothan. I was like, man, we need to uh, we need to go after this Kothan guy. And then immediately Joseph Tan, in the exact same outfit, walks up to me and goes, hey, how are you doing? What's up? So I thought he was Kothan. And then in Slack, I discovered he's not, but he's also Asian, so he roasted me. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not racist. Um, <laughs> Something a racist tell. would say. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell. The event was six to eight. The first place team won Echo Dots. But here's the best part. They like triple ordered on food, presumably because they had like 40 attendees, like 18 of which showed up. Also, she talked to me and on top of that, they double ordered um, because like the events coordinator ordered and she ordered. So like both people in Capital One ordered all of the food. Um, 
which meant at the end of the competition, they like just pointed at the snack corner room and then was like raid. <laughs> it was a very entertaining sight. A Malhar gets a special yeah, like no. I, I got the same one. Like there's two of those. You got one too? Yeah. That legitimately might have been worth more than the Echo Dots we walked away with. The cookie? The oh, trick. It was like no fucking like sixty it cookies. Twenty one ninety nine on the label. That's pretty comparable for like not being okay. an actual prize. That's ridiculous. That's like useless, man. <laughs> so like they had mean? a they had a ton of food. They were like, go get it, and I'm just like, here I am, like, oh, to be casual, people just like wander in. People just lined up. You and Amar grabbed full on like ornate like fifty piece Big dessert trays to walk out. <laughs> Zane gets an, a special note because there was a glass thing holding a ton of candy, and he just set up shop. Opened up his backpack, took the top off, and just dumped the whole thing in his backpack and walked away. I got a gluten-free pizza. We raided that bitch like it was nothing. <laughs> so, like, some people legitimately might have gotten more food, like in terms of worth, than our actual prizes. <laughs> so my target at CS Four is just it just went pretty fucking well. Yeah, did it? Yeah. Cool. The fucking professor is like, let me go see if you can help. Uh, I will set you up with a damn dog. damn professor is trying to help. No, he's like, he was, as, soon, as, soon, as soon as I, I pulled up the site, he saw the, the input field where like the input, uh, he's like, all right, we'll hack that later. I was like, well, fuck. It's, <laughs> it's literally like the join the chat is literally a serverless lambda function. So I encourage yeah. anybody to try to hack it because there's nothing to hack. Yeah, I don't know about this. He's probably trying to, but yeah. he was like, yeah, you go ahead. The only thing you could theoretically do is leak the token in there, which I actually don't need. So that's my Slack API joke. Um, another thing of note, because we really need to move on, because holy shit, that slide took a long time. Um, we just got approval for this like an hour ago. Go around with Patriot Hackers, of which Mark is president. Um, we're watching War Games and something before that um, in the JC Cinema, October 21st. Details at this. The whole thing um, is technically noon to four. But if you'll you'll see on the link, like noon to one is like nothing, so you can stroll into there. That's why I said something else. Like there's like a one hour PBS documentary between noon and one. You just stroll in as you come in. Um, movie starts at I think 1:30, 3:30 it should end. People can talk from 3:30 to four. Everybody gets booted out at four. You gotta keep in mind that this is also the same day as the uh, in-person CCS. Yeah. Um, so. And uh, the in-person one is still only down at C4, and it's an hour away, so we have to be there by the 8 a.m. But keep in mind, it's like East Carolina and 9 a.m., so you gotta either just one place or not, so choose. Honestly, my bet is, um, do you guys get some, uh, some advanced people for the CTF? And then A, all basic, and B, people who have time commitments will probably go to this. Yeah. So we should get plenty of people for both things. I mean, Max is eight people per team. So. Can you do multiple teams for? Yeah, that's pretty sure. Then yeah, it'll be fine. Um, I swear to God, there's a CTF at Top Golf allowed, and then we just like circle jerk for like ten minutes about why it's a weird place. This is what Top Golf looks like. Like that's their like business model type thing. It's literally like a driving range. No idea why it's a suitable place for competition. Um, I no, I don't hate it. I literally took the it's picture on the right. Well, they have alcohol. Yeah, I mean, I literally took a pic, took the picture on the right, and they had like snacks and all that. <laughs> but outside, not like in the, one of the conference rooms or meeting rooms. Or so that's what I'm thinking. It could be there, but still, it's a weird place to have it. It's like then you could get it anywhere. In a they have it? I don't think they would. Do we get to have conference? They have very like limited ones. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, a huge part of it is the driving range, but they also have that entire long stretch of the bar. And above that's supposed to be like all office space. I would bet oh. you there's like oh, okay. meeting rooms and stuff up there. I went to another Top Golf in Virginia Beach and it was a little, it was about the same. They just didn't have the office space that you're talking about. Gotcha. So I was like, this one also has like five foosball tables too. Yeah. Well, the Loudon is by far, the, I live in Alexandria and I go to the Loudon one. The Loudon one is the cool one. Um, if they do anything related to Top Golf, that's also kind of cool. Because Top Golf can get expensive and fast. Are they having it this year? Or the CTF. CTF thing? I literally wrote these slides for like a week from now, so they had to have. They, there has to be a CTF. We'll just look for it. Okay. Um, sorry for the confusion regarding that, though. To do this slide, lol. Um, Sweet, I'm here for a 
So Python and Ruby CTF scripting. Why the fuck is this slide? As you can see, I proofread my slides this week. I, I, I swear to God, normally I proofread my slides. No, no, this is good for me because I'm the racist guy. I need it like three times. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> this is I just love how, <laughs> I just love how normally, so the plenty of real world applicability I stole from Paul. Because Paul always says that here's how it impacts us in the real world. And usually I don't have to spell it out for advance. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll spell it out this time. That was the least effort I've ever put into spelling something out. Literally just restating the title. So Python and Ruby CTF scripting. 99% um, of people script for CTFs in Python. Ruby, I script in uh, for. Holy shit, I feel terrible because I'm out of frame for the past 20 minutes. Um, Ruby, I script in. Um, so I'm covering that. I know Chris scripts in Ruby too. Um, and then regex is literally one slide, frankly, but it's, it's good. Um, plenty of real world applicability. The reason I restated it, you'll notice I took the CTF word out of it. That's the way my head works. So <laughs> everything is applicable with the exception of this is more into a CTF context than actual like real world, which I mean, in a CTF you're like programming against sockets for programming and stuff like that. That's shit you could be doing in the real world pretty easily, like depending on what you're doing. Uh, if you've never used libraries or done any like object-oriented stuff in these languages, that's the kind of stuff you'll see a lot in scripting. Pwn Tools is a very popular um, CTF library for Python, um, so this would be a good introduction to that kind of stuff. Other reason I say objects is because Pwn Tools and stuff instantiates like objects for like everything. Similarities. Um, somebody's gonna argue with me on this. But both are commonly referred to as interpreted. So it goes through, when you run it, you can eventually Python, blah, 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 dot py. I think Python it technically just in time compiles. Yep. So it compiles literally as you run. Ruby, I'm pretty sure is straight interpreted unless you do something weird with it. Um, dot pyc is an example, is a, Counter example to this argument because that's literally like compiled Python by code. Um, both are really easy to start from. I always talk about like I'm a strong proponent of Java is not a good language to start with because you have to know how classes work and all that to even say like hello world. Like you have to at least start with a main class and all that. With Python and Ruby, they're like scripting, so you literally just print or you put hello world. Like you can start out with literally one line. Um, it's easy to get your start. That's why a lot of computer science and related courses at Mason use Python as their start. Ruby's a little more hipsterish, so that's why nobody's using it. Also, it's got a lot of flaws, I'm not gonna lie. Um, both generally expect application. That's what I meant when I say you run it through Python space blah blah blah, Ruby space blah blah blah. Python differences. It's super dependent on your tabs and indents and all that. Um, there's currently like a clash between who's using 2.7 and who's using Python 3. I think the main reason there's like a clash right there is because all the libraries are pretty much in 2.7 and nobody wanted to move away from it. Um, the key differences with 2.7 and 3, in my opinion, are A, printing is how, you, how they handle print is different. How you print being like the basic Python thing to print to the screen. And also raw input was, I believe, deprecated. So now they just do input to get user input. Those are like the two most common things you run into. Um, better community, larger community, more stuff available in Python. It's also pretty performant compared to Ruby. Um, so here are two examples. One is using raw input, but in three it'd literally just be input. And honestly, in 2.7, I'm pretty sure it accepts input. So really, this just should just say input, honestly. Name, please. Assign it to name. I wish the thing was higher quality because it says print. Print your name is. Comma can be used in Python to concatenate string. Your name is, and then it prints your name. Um, this is an example of a request. Import. The request is that how do you refer to that in Python? Module, library, module, library, module, module, module. Okay, that's module. You pip, you'd use pip as a common package manager to handle 
that stuff in Python, so you pip install requests or whatever first. Um, and then requests.get our website.text would output um, just the HTML from our website. Um, the reason I say objects are fun to play with in CTF is because what you're doing here, between here and here, is like making a, I think it's a response class object, and then one of the properties or whatever, I don't know the exact term, probably properties, is text, and you're fetching that from it. So you could do like, like data equals this, and then data.text would return the same thing. Like you could do it, you could split it up into multiple lines. That's like objects that it can put in text. Yeah. Ruby differences, it's got pretty unique syntax, especially in terms of like how it does if, if ends, but not just if, but like, does it use for, for and while and all that work similarly, where it's like, yeah. It's just, it's characterized by, where Python is characterized by indentation, it's characterized by keywords like end. Um, luckily, if you screw that up, it literally throws a keyword end exception, so it's pretty easy to figure that out. Um, not indentation dependent, it's memory collection is absolute shit, and if you spend more than 10 seconds Googling Ruby, it's pretty obvious why. Like, Googling Ruby memory collection, they basically don't try to garbage collect in the slightest. Um, it's pretty clean for higher level tasks. Like if I just want to do a request and a couple other things, I'll use Ruby. Um, better string interpolation in my opinion. Python like 3.2 just decided to do like sane interpolation like this. But if you save gets being similar to input, so you print out please enter your name. Gets is just fetch user input. Name equals whatever they put in. So name is Michael Bailey. If you do your name is um, pound brackets name right here, it'll throw in the string directly and it'll cast it as string. So like you don't have to deal with any bullshit like integer and string are being added together like you frequently do with programming. Python's getting more sane with that, with like how they're handling format and all that. But they just, I think they just formally said, okay, here's how you concatenate Python in 3.2. And you still have to like add like a modifier to the front to cast it to string. So there's a little bit more to be seen for that. They're also gen crazy, where you have like the modules for Python, Rubies are commonly gems. Like so require HTT party right here. HTT party is a gem. Um, they love their dependencies. If you have a problem with your code, it's like the top stack overflow answer is gonna be like just install this gem. Like they're in love with just throwing more dependencies at it. Um, this is an example to do basically the same thing as the last slide. HTT party, there are multiple ways to fetch to HTTP requests in Ruby. I prefer HTTP party. Get request, period, parsed response. The reason it's parsed response is because if you're fetching something really programmer-ish, like JSON or something, it'll automatically parse that into JSON it'll JSON parse it automatically. So that's what like the default is for HTTP or party. But in this case, it would just return the HTML because we're not fetching anything fancy. Uh, puts is like their print. I don't think I said that, but yeah. CTF context, automation. A lot of CTFs will require automation of you. Phone tools in Python, um, depending on the problem is how I would pick a Ruby gem for it. Because I think there is technically like a really, really bad phone tools fork for Ruby. But depending on the problem, like if you're doing sockets, you should like get a choice socket library. Is that the term? Uh, gems is the same thing as Lab Tools and Python. It's just in the font of the gems. Yeah, it's it's like it's a dependency, yeah. Yeah. Um so like if you're doing socket stuff in a CTF, I wouldn't look for like what is Ruby CTF gems. I would be like sockets. Ruby gems and look at the parts for that. Um, I do, like I'd approach it based on problems. So here's a non-CTF example. A lot of people gave us names for the ice cream social um, at BSC. We got a page of them, and what this is doing. God damn, it was ugly. 
So what it's doing is import requests first and foremost. That says with. With open list as app. So open a file literally called list. Um, or I think this is just going line by line. Yeah. Um, Circuit runs a, if you're familiar with People Finder, at Mason, it's a service where you give it a net ID or a name or something and it returns metadata about the student. Um, it's just sending a request based on the net ID and if the length is zero, print out, if, the, if there are no results, print out the username because that means they probably misspelled it or something. So we, we ran it through that to get the spellings and stuff. Somebody can absolutely correct me if I'm wrong, but when you JSON parse, it effectively behaves as an array, right? A dictionary. A dictionary, okay. Um, which if you have no idea about data types and you had to approach it, you could probably approach it some other way, right? Get away with it. Um, but yeah, results is, the results, yeah. If the length is zero, something's wrong. That's how we do a lot of like our stuff, by the way. We'll like scrape a page, uh, for instance, the Booz Allen CPF, we scraped that page, we ran it through this, said if the length is exactly one, like if not only is this somebody's net ID, but we know whose net ID it is, it's not like, like I'm mbale18, if you search mbale, it'll bring up all mbales. So if we search it and there's only one, then that is somebody's net ID. So what we did with Booz Allen CTF was we scraped, saw which ones are definitely net IDs, and then emailed them all about our form. So that's how we do a lot of our promotional stuff as we run it through people finder. But yeah, so request, does the request, saves it, parses it through JSON. Um, well, I guess JSON's an object or a property of the requests thing. And then that says print. God, I should have thought better about print. Active projects, Paul's doing a cipher script slash finish one. Um, I already did one but it's in Ruby, so he was just like, screw you, I'm writing my own Python, which is fine. So Paul should have a Python one actually going. If you're interested in development related to CTFs, um, there's a channel in our Slack called Git Good. Git because we version control it and all that through Git. Um, I recommend going there. Chris, you did an RE script, it's called Easy RE. Um, he uses Anger and some other stuff, or what? No, it's just Anger. Yeah, anger. And it does what? Symbolic? Yeah, yeah. so it, it's symbolically executing a program. So you, you just run it from A to B, and it like solves simple things. So like if it's looking for input, that's weirdly getting, uh, uh, what is it called? Like checked, like you're doing bit shifts or something. Something that'd be like tough to reverse. And I think we've literally, like you wrote it, and since then we've looked at problems, like really beginner problems in CTFs, and gone, oh, the easy RE script would work for that. Yeah. Like we've seen real world examples where that it would solve an RE problem. Um, work in progress, decompression script. I, I abandoned that project, but yeah. It was, you give it a blob, it looks for parts in the blob that's theoretically base 64. If it does, it decodes it. It looks for blobs that could be GZIP. It looks for blobs that could be in a variety of compression formats that can compress the film. We could do as much decompress as possible. Anybody's wondering how that was working is it was literally iterating byte by byte looking for magic bytes. But if it saw a magic byte related to the compression format, it would go then, it was very intensive, byte by byte trying to, so this four block, uh, unzip it through gzip. This six block, unzip it, unzip it through gzip. Eight block, unzip it. And um, keep going until it failed. And then once it failed, okay, that was the block. Um, Eight block does something really similar to that where it's just scanning. So I'm glad I abandoned it because I'm probably going to do that elsewhere. I was um, saying you could extend it for stuff that uh, he doesn't support. Sure, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, that project's abandoned. The other ones, though, are on Git and they're in that Git Good uh, channel. G I T Good. Regular expressions. So, regular expressions, they're basically, it's a, a, regu a regular expression can be viewed as a string but it's basically representing a set of rules for like matching patterns in a string. Um, 
it's really useful in general, especially in, I would say it's most useful in security context, but because people like rolling their own security rules in regex, like there was recent CTF, I'm not saying it's a good idea, but people do rule, roll, like sometimes you shouldn't, sometimes you should actually do it the way the programming language wants you to. But sometimes people will use regexes, for instance, if it matches this regex, it's probably SQL injection, and it's like some massive regex, and like di like discard or reject from the user if it matches this. There was recently a CTF that did that, and it literally just checked for, I think the term union, and if it saw union, it was like, oh, it's probably SQL injection. Kick it back, that that's not adequate. It's not adequate to stop SQL injection, as a lot of you know. That was the, that was, for those of you who did it, that was the solution, right? You just went around the union? Yeah. You didn't do union? Okay. Yeah, you could, he was only blocking the union based SQL injection. Uh, like the, the trick was just to do like a and equals, or and one equals one colon. Yeah. So that's why you don't roll your, you try not to roll your own rules through regex because you're not going to think of every scenario possible. Um, here's a simple example of a regular expression. The full one's here. It's always, it's pretty much always a slash, a slash, and then modifiers on either ends on the outside of the slash. Um, I'll go over modifiers in a second. G is like check multiple lines for this regular, regular expression. So simple one, period means any character. Um, asterisk means any number of them. And then they're treating the comma as literal. Period, any character, comma, period, any character. So what that's doing is any characters, comma, any characters, comma, any characters. That's the pattern. So it's trying to match against that pattern. So for instance, test, comma, test, comma, test would match that pattern in regex. If you took out a comma, it would no longer match. Um, it's good for, I don't think, it's. I'm really sad actually that it didn't end up in here. Something tells me it's sitting on my drive somewhere. Um, Chris, you literally saw me planning it. You take a, say you have like a million byte, like a giant blob of text. You're looking for a flag that you know, like say it's like CC and then brackets, whatever the flag is, which is very common in CTFs. You won't necessarily be able to just like find CC bracket if it's like a massive blob of text, you might get false positives. So you can run a regex against it saying CC bracket, unless, yeah, CC technically dash to escape it bracket because bracket has special meaning in regex. Period. Uh, star for any text. Slash any slash end bracket. And it would look for that pattern and then you could just pattern match and look down and try to find the flag for that. That'd be a more perfect way to look for the flag instead of just searching the text. So you finally get to hear me stop talking today. Um, this is an example, it was from Seesaw 2016. If you've heard, if anybody's done coin slot, this is coin slot. Um, it is hosted, you are welcome to hit it. It is bsides.michaelbailey.co because I'm giving a B-Sides talk this weekend so I already have the server up. Um, port 1337. If you have Netcat, which anybody running Linux should have, if you have Windows, God forbid, I don't know why you would, but if you have Telnet enabled in Windows, that would work the same. Just don't know why you would have that though. Um, and then I, I, I would explain the problem, but it's really pretty self-explanatory once you netcat or whatever into it. So um, people are welcome to hit it up and that's basically what we're gonna do from here on out. Um, just a brief explanation, I guess. You netcat into it, it gives you a dollar amount, one dollar and 16 cents. You then it says how many hundred dollar bills for this? How many ten dollar bills? How many twenty dollar bills? How many five dollar bills? How many dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies? And you have to give it the proper answer. And then it goes cool and asks again. And asks again, and asks again. And then, but you can't just fill it out and get the flag. Um, you would have to script the proper answer to it, run it against that socket, and then after like a thousand matches, it drops. If you really don't even know where to start with this, um, they have write-ups. Like I said, it's CoinSlot, Seesaw, um, CSAW is the company.
competition. So you can do a little C point slot seesaw right up to see how somebody else did it. So that's what we're doing here. I'm going to say feel free to pick it up. Oh yeah, and starting points, sockets, parsing and splitting, and if you want regex. Oh, well, only one actually left. I think the other one got boring, so you want to jump, which I would jump as well. <laughs>